prayer. There is a need for prayer among God's people today. Prayer leads to the proclamation of God's word and the pouring out of revival. The National Day of Prayer is a vital year-round movement. Rallying prayer for America. As this movement has grown, it has inspired, encouraged, and ignited many prayer movements across our nation and around the world. Every year, the first Thursday in May is the National Day of Prayer. From early morning to late night, from the East to the West, God's people, young and old, will gather in prayer events across our nation to cry out to God for America and to pray God's glory across the earth. Habakkuk 2.14 proclaims a promise and a hope to every generation. Will you join us? Will you tell others? Will you pray? Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night service here at Parkway Baptist Church. We've been engaged in a timely and very helpful study called Tough Times that Matt Meganson has been leading on Wednesday nights, and that study will resume next week. But tonight we will be focusing specifically on praying for our nation as we get ready to participate in the National Day of Prayer. National Day of Prayer was authorized by Congress. Both houses agreed to it, and it was signed into law by President Harry Truman in 1952. In 1988, the law was amended and signed by Ronald Reagan to make the first Thursday of May the National Day of Prayer. And so for over 30 years now, uh, Christians all across our nation have gathered in different venues to pray specifically for our nation. Every year, whether it's local, state, or national observances, have been held from sunrise in Maine to sunset in Hawaii, uniting Americans from all socioeconomic, uh, political, and ethnic backgrounds in united prayer for our nation. Normally, these uh, gatherings uh, take place at state capitals or county courthouses, maybe on the steps of City Hall. Some of the prayer gatherings take place at schools or businesses or churches and homes, uh, all different kinds of settings across our nation. This year is going to be different, as you can imagine. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are limited into the settings where we can go and lift up our voices in prayer, but we are not limited in our ability to continue to pray. And so even though most of our nation is currently in a lockdown, we will observe the National Day of Prayer tomorrow. And as has been our custom here at Parkway Baptist Church to do it the night before. I hope that you will uh, look at our website where you can get all the information that you need about the National Day of Prayer. But let me share the highlights uh, before we get to our prayer time here this evening. If you're on our email distribution list, you've been receiving already this week a specific prayer topic to be praying for for that day. Tonight, in this setting, our church staff plus one will be leading us in specific prayers for each of the areas of need in just a few moments. Then on tomorrow, Thursday, May the 7th, which is the actual National Day of Prayer, our Gillisville Ministerial Alliance will lead in a virtual prayer service for our community. This can be seen and accessed on our Facebook page, so I invite you to go to Facebook tomorrow to find this service. Our Goodlesville Ministerial Alliance also is sponsoring a prayer walk or a prayer drive uh, beginning at 12 noon tomorrow. Those who can and will are encouraged to meet us in the parking lot at the Goodlesville Cumberland Presbyterian Church at noon. Strict social distancing will be maintained and everyone who comes is encouraged to wear a mask. From there, we will disperse and go out into the immediate Gullitsville uh, city proper to pray for businesses and schools, for our government, 
and for churches and any other places that God leads us to uh, together uh, as a community. If you can't attend or don't feel comfortable attending that meeting, we, we're simply suggesting that uh, you do a prayer walk yourself. Maybe you and your family, maybe you by yourself, maybe you want to get in the car and ride around your neighborhood and just pray for our nation. Then tomorrow evening, there'll be a special broadcast on the National Day of Prayer, and you can find the details of where you can locate that uh, presentation on our website. Now tonight, our church staff, plus one, will be coming to lead us in prayer over the seven centers of influence in our country. Gerald Crowder is going to lead us off. He is our plus one, and Gerald will come in a moment and lead us in prayer for churches. Gerald has served faithfully behind the scenes, helping us to make sure that our Sunday and Wednesday Facebook Live broadcasts are able to get on the air and be maintained. And his service uh, to our church and our community has been invaluable. So he's going to start us off tonight by praying for churches. He'll be followed by Alan Jenkins, who will be praying for the media. Following Alan will come Melody Pudlow, who will be praying for businesses. Chris Keene will then come and pray for the military. Bobby Webb will follow in praying for education. I'll return to lead us in prayer for our government. And then Matt Meganson will close out our time together tonight in praying for families. So I invite you to join us now as we lift up our nation and the concerns of these times in prayer. Gerald comes now to lead us as we begin by praying for our churches. Good afternoon. Thank you, Ken. I'm privileged to be here. As Ken said, uh, I'm much more comfortable on the other side of the camera than this side, but uh, I feel privileged to be here. It wouldn't feel appropriate for me to, to pray about the churches without just telling you a couple statements. Um, me and my family come to Parkway about three years ago, and, and I just have to tell you, for those of you who are watching that aren't members, if you need a home church, this is the place to come. Since my family's been here, we have, they have made us feel like family. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's made a huge impact on my life. Uh, as well as, you know, the, you guys, I'm missing my brothers and sisters right now. So the other thing that I wanted to mention, too, is the staff. I've been privileged to work with the staff here uh, during this, this shutdown period and been able to form some close relationships, and that's been a great mentor to me as well. So I love you guys, and thank you. Um, let us pray. Father, we come to you tonight to ask you to continue to guide Parkway through these difficult times. 2020 has been some challenging times for us, but we know that you're in control and that you will bring us out on the other side. I pray for the members of Parkway that you will continue to provide and protect them uh, during this difficult time. I pray for the staff that you'll continue to give them wisdom and knowledge and guidance as they have to lead and make decisions during this difficult time. I pray for Melody and Alan, as they have a really difficult job to keep the, the youth and the children engaged, and they've done a really great job of that. I just pray that you continue to allow them to think outside of the box to keep them engaged and focused on you. I pray for Chris, as he leads us in worship each week and working with the praise team, as they bring songs to us and we can lift up our voices and sing to you each week. I pray for Bobby as he gathers the troops for our Sunday school classes, tries to keep everyone engaged and online and connected. And that too has been a challenge, but they found technology to get through that. I pray for Matt uh, as he continues to lead us through these tough times for this powerful messages that he's been delivering on Wednesday nights. And then I pray for Ken. Uh, Ken has been just a steady leader for the church, and that's what we need during these times. So I ask that you continue to um, allow Ken to bring his steady leadership in uh, and help us through these times. I also pray for all of the staff that they've got some decisions as things start to open back up and that they will you know, be able to weigh the safety of all of the members of the church, as well as making sure that we get back into a house to worship. 
I also would like to pray for the pastor search committee. As if the COVID-19 isn't enough, we're going to have a pastor search committee uh, find us a new pastor at some point this year. And I pray that they haven't been hampered by, by the shutdown, but they have been able to use technology as well, and that they will find the per right person to lead Parkway into the future. I also pray for all the other local churches, as well as uh, the churches around the world, that we will stick together and lift up your name uh, in everything that we do. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, appreciate you and uh, appreciate all the work you've been doing. And we've enjoyed getting to know you better through these times as well. And it just shows, again, the privilege and the joy of being part and being connected to the body of Christ. Uh, we do miss one another and we look forward to being able to see one another when things are right. But uh, for the meantime, we're thankful for technology and the things that we have to connect us uh, right now. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be praying for media. And as we think first and foremost, probably about TV and those kinds of things. Uh, I can't help but also mention uh, social media as well. It's become a, an outlet for us and it's become something that we've all uh, been connected with and connected to as most of you are probably watching this right now on Facebook Live. Yeah, and, you know, we are connected through media and so tonight I've got a couple of quick scriptures I want to read and then uh, also lead us into a time of praying for our media. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, listen to the Word of God real quick. Psalm 19. Uh, in Psalm 19, we read these words in verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What a great reminder from, from David that we need to be cognizant of what we're sharing. And we want to pray that for those who are sharing news, whether that be local or, or on a national level or, or just a TV show that we're watching. May that their words be pleasing in the sight of God. Let's think about that with our own words, about what we say, what we tweet, what we share on Facebook, what we like. Um, God, help us to be those kinds of people. Uh, also, Philippians chapter 4, here the Apostle Paul writes these words. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence in anything worthy of praise... Dwell on these things. What a great reminder for us in days that we find ourselves maybe inside and more isolated to think and dwell on the things that are good. And that also comes into the things that we allow into our life, the media that we digest, whether it be movies or TV shows or even the news, choosing to, to watch those things that are good, those things that will encourage us, those things that will challenge us and keep our heart in the right place as well. So let's pray for our, uh, our media outlets, let's pray for those who are in the media and let's ask God to do a great work in their hearts because it's, it's their heart that ultimately will lead to what they speak as well. So let's pray. Father, you are so incredibly good. Lord, I'm so thankful that you are good even when I fail. You never fail. God, tonight I want to lift up um, the, the media. Lord, we've got one group that accuses another group of being one way or another way. Lord, I pray that you would unite us and that you would bring us to a place where rather than bashing one another, we support and encourage one another, that we speak truth, that we speak truth in love, that we are dependable, that we're reliable, that we would not focus on terrible and bad things, but rather that we would look for things that are good and that we would direct in that direction as well. Lord, we know truth needs to get out, and I pray that truth would get out through the media and the news outlets and through Facebook and all of the social medias, but I pray that it would be tempered with love and that we would think not just about what we say, but also about how we say it. You tell us in your word to speak the truth in love, and I pray that that would be what our, our, our social media would do, but also that that would be what we would do with our national media and our movies and our shows. Father, forgive us when we dwell too long on things that we shouldn't. I pray for our hearts as, 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 a, as a people that follow you, but also our hearts as, as uh, Americans and as citizens of this world, that, God, you would prick our hearts and help us to see the things that we don't need to be about and encourage us to be about the things that we do. 
Lord, I do pray for, for media. It can be such a blessing and such a great thing. And I pray, Lord, that, that God, you would do a work in and through us to interact with it in the right way, to teach our children how to interact in it in the right way, that we would not run from media, and then we would not run to it, but that we as Christians would let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Lord, please help us to use media in the right way. And I pray, God, that you would bring media back to where it needs to be. Lord, as always, please forgive us where we have failed you. And Lord, help us to extend grace to those uh, around us as well, knowing that we are definitely not perfect. Lord, I'm so thankful for this day that you have given us. Lord, I pray that we would use it wisely and that we would use it well. Lord, please do a great work in our nation and in this world. We love you and praise things in Christ's name. Amen. We're reminded in the book of Colossians that we can't separate our work for a paycheck from our work for the kingdom, for they are one and the same. We may try to make them separate, but they're not. Our work as Christians is in our workplace. We are serving in our workplace. Colossians 3.24 says, Whatever we do, we do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord that's where we will receive the reward of our inheritance, for we serve the Lord Christ. So that is our work, that is our business, serving the Lord Christ. Let's pray for our businesses. Father God, we come to you today just thanking you for uh, the business and economic opportunity that exists in the, United, in the United States of America. We are so blessed to have a, a, a hearty economy and to have really enjoyed that in comparison to other nations around the world. And we know that it is your gift to us. You, you have given men the mind and the human ingenuity uh, and the resourcefulness to seek out uh, uh, economic opportunities, Lord. And we're just so grateful for that. But right now during this pandemic um, that has been um, threatened and um, we, we've kind of faced an uncertain future, and there have been many businesses, Lord, that have um, been tested, and some that may have even failed, and we may even have church members uh, who have lost their jobs right now or whose businesses are in jeopardy, Lord, and we just lift all of this up to you. We know that you are in control. And we lift up those who are hurting and maybe having to figure out how to start again or, or um, you know, how, where to find a job. Lord, we, we ask your blessings on those who are searching. And we ask that those of us who have been fortunate and have not been affected in our livelihoods, that we would be generous and we would have our eyes open to those who are in need and that we would respond, Lord. We pray for our leaders. We pray for government leaders. We pray for business leaders as we uh, begin to open up again. And we pray for their guidance from you as to how to do that and how to create policies that are most effective and safe. And Lord, um, we just ask your blessings on the business community. We ask for integrity in the business world and for people to see their business as uh, not just building a biz business, but building the kingdom of God. And we especially ask that, Lord, I mean, as Christians, that we would have that outlook, that our workplace is the main arena where we can be your servants, Lord. May this um, turn of events, this pandemic, be a reminder to us that our way of life could come crumbling down at any time. That it is not sure, nothing on earth is sure or certain except you, Lord. Your promises are sure. Your truths are sure. 
and you are a firm foundation. So let us not, let us learn from this. Let us be changed by this, that we put our hope and trust in you and not in our circumstances and not in what we think men can do. But we ask your blessings, God, for our nation. We ask uh, your blessings for the businesses and the economic uh, opportunities in our nation. And we ask that uh, we could get, you know, return to normalcy and that you would bless us in that and give us guidance and hope in that. And, but through it all, Lord, I pray that we as individuals and uh, as businesses would look to you and that you would be at the center of everything and that we would remember that nothing that happens on this earth, not one thing, um, can take away the hope that we have in you. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm honored tonight to be able to pray for our military, and I wanted to begin with a scripture found in 2 Chronicles 32, 6 through 8. Hezekiah, the king of Judah, appointed military officers over the people and assembled them and encouraged them with these words, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him. For there is a greater power with us than with him. With him only is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us to fight our battles. This banner, um, several years ago, I got to hang in our window when my brother served in Iraq. As you walk around today, when more people are doing more walking in neighborhoods, you might see some of these hanging in windows to represent soldiers that are in families that are serving around the world. And I hope that when you do see them that you'll lift up a prayer on behalf of that family. My brother Randy has served in the military for 34 years, 17 years with the Marine Corps and the Marine Corps Reserve, and 17 with the Army National Guard. He just returned from serving in Kuwait. I asked him what would be some specific things that we could pray for uh, from a soldier's perspective. And he said, family relationships, uh, parents that are separated from kids, uh, they miss a lot of key moments in the life of their family when they're away. Pray for marriages, the stress and the strain of spouses being apart. And sometimes uh, both the husband and the wife are uh, serving at the same time. Pray for the one parent that is trying, uh, that has stayed behind, that is trying to deal with all the uh, problems that the kids have, uh, just being able to uh, take them where they need to go, get them places, uh, take care of them when they're sick. Doing that with just one spouse can be very difficult. Pray for the economic hardships due to military spouses that lose their jobs. It puts a great strain on the family. Pray for the health of the military members and their families. Also, he asked that we pray for no new military threats or terrorist activities that may develop because of the world economic impact. We also have been given some other um, things to pray for uh, as uh, we remember our military. So if you would join me in prayer, remembering those things that Randy asked us to pray about and uh, these as well. God, we pray for courage and dependence on God for these soldiers, men and women that serve around the world. We pray for their perseverance during severe hardship. We pray for their families during this time, that they're separated, God, that you would provide with them all the things that they need. We also provide, we ask you to provide for divine protection from the enemy, those enemies that come uh, in at times that are very unexpected. 
And Lord, we pray for you to raise up wise leaders, wise leaders that depend upon you, that can be good Christian examples to other soldiers, that would inspire them to follow. We also pray for confidence and vision to persist in the face of negative publicity. Lord, we pray for the truth to prevail. So many times the truth is misrepresented uh, for some political gain, and this is harmful to our military personnel. Lord, we pray for protection and support for the families that are left behind, helping them to deal with things that uh, paying bills for repairs on cars or houses and for the children, for jobs, for them to have friendships and support and helpers during the time that their spouse is away. And Lord, we're thankful for chaplains that go and serve and try to provide spiritual guidance for soldiers during these times. And God, we just pray for extra strength for them as they do this service. I know, I know of at least three that serve in this capacity and what a great opportunity they have to share you with many, many soldiers. And God, I also wanna pray for those soldiers that are suffering from PTSD as they come home from wars around the world. God, that you'll supply the needs and the help that they uh, need so desperately during this time, that you'll provide patience for the families as they learn to deal with this uh, PTSD. Lord, for those that come home with wounds, I pray for healing. I pray for their adjustment to their new way of life. And I pray that you would give them confidence in you, that you will take care of them and see them through. And God, we're so thankful for people that uh, go and serve on our behalf uh, for our freedom, the freedom that we have here in America to serve you and to uh, worship you. And we pray that that would continue. And Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. I want to echo what several people have said to you already. We miss you, and we know you miss one another. It's in my heart to share this with you right now. It came there uh, earlier, I believe, from God's Spirit, right out of Matthew, and you're very familiar with this. But think on this. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. I really honestly believe that this gathering that we're doing uh, qualifies under that. So let us trust that Christ is in our midst. He's right there in your home. He's right here in this building. He's wherever all of his people are gathered in his name. We want you to be comfortable, but I encourage you, um, if you can, turn other devices off, block out other noises. If it makes, maybe it will help you just to take the posture of prayer by getting on, a posture of prayer by getting on your knees. Whatever way you want to do that right now, what I would ask is that you unite with me and let's pray together passionately. And I'm going to begin as you bow your heads by reading uh, a scripture from Proverbs 2. If you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as silver and search as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Lord, we know that's what we need. It's what I need and what we need as individuals. And tonight, we're also uniting to pray it over a huge body of people across our nation and around the world but in our nation lord our educators are so vital and god you inspired me i believe to look up the names of local directors of schools and these were immediately available we so we pray tonight for doctors adrian battle chris causey donna wright and Dell Phillips the third. I know there are many others, Lord, and so these are representative of, representative of those others. But we pray that these men and women might be yours. If they are not your children, Lord, we pray that boldly now that you will send your, uh, your ambassadors, your tools in your hands to go to them and bring the message of the gospel. Lord, and if they are yours, uh, we pray for them to walk in your wisdom, in your spirit, to seek you as hidden treasure and to walk then in your wisdom as they leave. But Lord, we realize it doesn't stop there. There are so many, both within Parkway and on the outside, teachers, Lord, many principals, other administrators, Lord, within the schools. We even pray 
uh, for those who are cleaning the schools, God, the janitors who are so important, Father, the maintenance people. We pray over them. We, we pray uh, for the students, God, each and every one. Lord, our hearts desire, and we pray it tonight, asking that it might continue to happen across our schools, that your name, that the name of the Lord Jesus will be honored and glorified, and that people will boldly live a witness for Christ and speak a witness for Christ. May those two be uh, welded together and wed together, Lord. I got a, in speaking of wisdom, I want to pray, go back to that and pray, Lord, for wisdom for those who are making decisions about the coming school years, Lord, both in our local schools, but also in colleges and universities everywhere, Lord, across this nation. We realize that that is fraught with so many other challenges now, and so we ask for your supernatural wisdom uh, to come to them as those are made. Lord, primarily at the end of it all, may the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ go forth powerfully uh, in the whole educational system of our nation and of our world, and I pray it in the wonderful and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. In Paul's first letter to Timothy in chapter 2, he writes these familiar words for a time such as this. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Would you join with me as we pray for our government, for those who are in authority over us right now. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thanking you, first of all, for the privilege and honor we have to call upon you because of what he did for us by shedding his blood on Calvary's cross. May we never forget that the only way we have access to you is through the sacrifice of his life for us. And so tonight we are grateful that we can call on you and know that you will hear us because of Jesus. Tonight, Father, I do pray for our government. I pray for those that have been elected and those that have been appointed in places of leadership and authority over us in this society. Father, tonight we pray for our president, and I ask that you be with President Trump as he faces uh, the hardest job uh, in all the world, and that is seeking to lead this great nation, which is the leader still in the world today. Give him wisdom and guidance. Help him to listen first and foremost to your voice, as well as to the voices of trusted advisors who I pray will be on their face and on their knees before you in prayer as well. I pray for the tough decisions that he must make. And I pray, Lord, that you would help him to put aside his pride, his ego, and anything else that would stand in the way of making the best decisions under your guidance that, are, that is needed for our country at this time. I pray for Vice President Pence, and especially in the role he plays now as the head of the Coronavirus Task Force. I thank you for his leadership, and I pray for those men and women, doctors and others, whom he surrounds himself with as they seek to find solutions to this pandemic that has truly upended uh, a normal way of life for us, not only in our country, but all around the world. Father, I pray that you would help them to continue to lead with uh, integrity and with wisdom and that you will give to them the guidance that we need uh, to bring us out of this. Of course, we pray for your healing. We pray for your ability as the great physician to stop this virus. We do pray, Father, that you'll bless those that are seeking to follow you and to follow guidelines that will help us uh, in uh, this uh, terrible uh, 
pandemic that has touched so very, very many lives. Father, we pray for our Congress. We pray for um, our Senate and for the House of Representatives. Pray for Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi as they lead those respective bodies. We pray for all the senators and congressmen and women who are in Washington at our pleasure through our votes. We pray, Father, for them that they would be dedicated to you. God, my prayer has been for so long that you would somehow put aside partisan politics and that you would bring together men and women who really want what's in the best interest of this country and not in their political party or their personal best interest. Lord, we pray that you would bring them together to make decisions that would be pleasing in your sight. We pray for our Supreme Court, all the justices and judges all throughout our land who make decisions in interpreting laws and, and as to how we will live in this society. And God, we pray that their hearts and ears will be turned toward you and your guidance in their lives. We pray for state government. We pray right here in Tennessee for Governor Bill Lee. And we just ask, Father, that you continue to give him what he needs to lead this state. I'm sure that when he was elected governor, in his wildest dreams, he never thought that he would be faced with such challenges as he's faced with now. But God, we thank you for his godly testimony and his open uh, testimony of his belief in you. And I pray, Lord, that you would give him uh, great wisdom and leadership of our state. Pray for our, our local uh, cities and communities, for the leaders. Um, at Parkway, we are a part of so many different, uh, different governments locally. So we pray for all the mayors, all the city commissions and councils. And God, again, just help them to please seek your, your face and to do your will. God, our country uh, is in trouble. We're in trouble at so many levels with uh, things that can only find their solution in you. So we pray tonight as humbly as we can, but as earnestly as we can, that you would speak to hearts of men and women, especially those who lead us, and that they would follow your, your guidance, they would follow your voice. And we know if they do that, that we will be all right. Thank you for this privilege we have to pray for them, and we lift them up in Jesus' name. Amen. As I think about families today, I think about this right here, fun and games. Fun and games, and when I hear this sound, it takes me back to all kind of memories of spending time with family and friends around a table. As I think about the families during these difficult times of kids being at home and parents being at home and all the extra time they have together, I imagine there's a lot of families who are sitting around the table playing games, some board games or card games and having more time to spend together and having a great time as a family. But the reality is sometimes when you spend more time together, it can add more stress to the family. A parent who is suddenly now a homeschool teacher as well, or uh, parents that are not all, not all the time together are suddenly thrust together all the time. And I've had some friends jokingly say, you know, he's gonna have to find somewhere else to go because I'm not used to him being home all the time and while we joke about that there's some there, there might be some tensions in the home you know when we see each other more and more if that relationship is great the more time together could make us even better but if there is some tension in a relationship then spending more and more time can add more tension and more stress and more difficulty to that relationship you can't get away from each other and we're faced with the reality of there's there's something missed there and so our prayer today is going to be for families, because you remember what the Bible says in Mark 3, 25, that if a house is divided against itself, then it cannot stand. And our prayer will be that with that this difficult time, this tough times that people are going through, that this will be a catalyst for reconciliation. It will be a time when they have to face up to the fact that we're at odds with each other and that they'll take that time for God to, nur to nudge their heart and say, now is the time to fix this. Now is the time to make that phone call. Now is the time to go and visit and to see your family members and to say, we need to make this right, and I want to be the catalyst that fixes this. Would you join me as we pray for our families that God would bless us during this difficult time? Let's pray together.
God, we just thank you for the, the blessings of family. And I want to come right now and just pray, pray God, for, a, for spouses that are at odds with each other. And, and they know right now, God, that your Holy Spirit is speaking to their heart, telling them that it's not right and it's not okay. They don't want their house to be divided. They don't want their house to, not, to fall, but they know that there's this divide with them that's coming with more stress. And I just pray, Lord, that you would nudge one of them to say, it's you, you go and make this right. You initiate reconciliation, and you don't stop until you fix this. God, I want to pray for a parent and a child who are not on speaking terms. There's doors closed between them that separates them. They're in different parts of the house. Most of the time when they see each other, it's a very curt hello and goodbye. And I just pray, Lord, for that relationship. And I would say, God, would you please touch their heart to say, fix this. Will you please give one of them or both of them the desire to realize that they're out of fellowship and that does not honor you and that they would pick up the phone or they would text or they would walk across the room and sit down and say, I'm sorry, and I want this to be right. God, I just pray for siblings who are at odds with each other. They can't get away from each other and they're annoying each other and it's gone way beyond that. And I pray, God, for healing to that relationship. God, I pray that we would honor you that all that we do as a family and as we stand as families that are followers of Jesus, that we want to set an example for other people to follow, an example of reconciliation. So help our families go stronger, God. Help our families to grow stronger together and stronger in our walk with you, that we would take time to pray together, to talk about the things of God, to use this time to grow together as a family and learn about you, that parents would model that this is important in our lives and in our families' lives. And even if we can't go to a church physically, you know, being a follower of Christ is every day and in every way that we would honor you. God, help us to reach out to other families, to encourage them in their walk with Christ as well. God, help us to uh, be the lighthouse to those who are hurting and struggling and through these times and help us to reach out to them in love and to share the love of Christ. God, please help us to be careful but not fearful of the times that we're in. And please don't let anxiety control our thoughts and our actions. But God, in trusting in you, we ask that you would build our families so that we can honor you with all that we do. Help us to lead our families well as parents. Kids, help us as kids to, to listen and to honor our parents. And, to, and God, more than anything, help us to submit to you and to listen to your guiding voice and your word as we sing praises to you, as we open your word and read from your word what you have to say to us. God, bless our families today and help bind them together. And I pray it in Jesus' powerful name. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for joining us for our broadcast today. And in just a moment, we're going to end with a closing video. But before we do, let me just remind you of a couple of things. This Sunday is Mother's Day. And what a great opportunity for us to come together on Sunday morning for our Sunday morning broadcast at 1030 right here on Facebook Live. We're going to honor mothers in a very special way. I know that you'll want to come be a part of that as we celebrate the special gift that mothers are to us every single day. But we're going to take some time on Sunday to honor them and to share what mothers mean to us. Also, next Wednesday night, we're back on our regular schedule of our Tough Time study as we look at God's Word and see how He has blessed other people through their tough times. And our hope is that this will be an encouragement to you as well as you're going through difficult times. Where will we broadcast from next week? What part of the church are we going to be in? You'll have to tune in next week to find out uh, next Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Now we're going to close with a video. It's a message, a very short message from Dr. David Butts. He is the chairman on the board of the National Day of Prayer. And as we're thinking about praying all week long, we'd love to hear from him about the importance of prayer on the National Day of Prayer. Thanks again for joining us for this broadcast, and we'll see you next week. Hi, my name is Dave Butts. I serve as chairman of the board for the National Day of Prayer. I absolutely love the National Day of Prayer. Uh, for me, it's kind of like uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving all wrapped up together. It's a time of celebration. It's a time when the church in the United States comes together 
to pray for our nation. Now, we can pray for our nation any time, any day. But this is the one day that is set aside by government to pray for our nation. And we don't need the government to tell us to pray, but what an astonishing privilege that this day is set aside for that. And we're seeing it happen in so many ways, whether it's in Washington, D.C., in large groups, or whether it's a small group of people who gather in a home. Maybe it's people who are literally flying across the nation to pray, or whether it's those who are meeting in their church or in their local communities. God's people, by the millions, come together on the first Thursday of May to pray for our nation. I hope you're going to be a person who joins us on this very special day. The National Day of Prayer has been around for over 30 years. And yet right now we are on the verge of some exciting new things for the National Day of Prayer. We have a, a new president, Ronnie Floyd, who brings with him fresh vision for a National Day of Prayer that's more than a day. It's literally every day. We believe that what takes place on that first Thursday of May can literally be a training time for the church to become a house of prayer that continues to pray not only for our nation, but for our world. That the kingdom of God would continue to expand and grow as God's people gather to pray. One of the things that Jesus valued most was the unity of his followers. In what we often call the great high priestly prayer of John chapter 17, Jesus prayed to the Father on behalf of his followers that they would be one. He understood that when there is unity, there is the power of his Holy Spirit working in and through his people. That's why I'm so excited that the theme for this year's National Day of Prayer is unity. As we begin to pray for unity in the church, I believe we'll begin to see unity take place in our nation and God's blessing can come to us in powerful ways.